Here, we have a new software engineer. Their approach to programming is ineffective and inefficient. They type out a program and hope it works. Here, we have a distinguished engineer. They go through a rigorous, iterative process of engineering with design and feedback loops that adapt to new challenges. We can draw a parallel to learning. A junior student might read and highlight and hope they learn. An advanced student follows a rigorous, adaptable process. But what does that look like? At the highest level, we iterate between self-regulation and studying. Pick your favorite team or athlete. During a game, they iterate between playing the game and taking a break to adapt their approach. The best are able to take advantage of half times or time in the corner between rounds to change their plan partway through a game. Within studying, we iterate between encoding and retrieval. Encoding is putting information into our brain, and retrieval is using and reorganizing that information to make it useful. Imagine a programmer. Encoding is like designing and writing the code. Retrieval is like running and testing the code. The best programmers go back and forth between these to finish a program. Finally, while encoding, we need to iterate between finding information and constructing a mental model of that information. Like a junior programmer pounding away at the keyboard, most people learn by finding and reading information. They don't construct a mental model. They don't retrieve and use information. They don't self-regulate and adapt. And they definitely don't iterate. To get a different picture, we can unroll the loop over a one semester course. Let's walk through this unrolled loop using the example of a real graduate computer science course. We'll use Georgia Tech's course on deep learning, which has a publicly available syllabus. First, we self-regulate. We determine our goals, gather resources, and map out an approach. In the Omni scheduling board, we create a high-level card encompassing the whole subject. In that card, we add our study template and fill out the basics, like what is our goal? How will we be tested? And what is our plan? Next, we create an infinite canvas and map out a plan of attack. We map out some practical stuff like quizzes, assignments, and projects. Then we go through the syllabus and try to organize the material into smaller modules with tightly coupled material. We might have to do some basic Googling for definitions. From the syllabus, we've come up with four modules. The first is the whole topic at a high level. We already created a card on the schedule board for this. The other three are math for deep learning, sequential data, and advanced topics. We need to create a card for each of these. Each module here covers a lot of material. Depending on the course and the amount of continuous time we have, we could have created smaller modules. That's our first self-regulation phase. Now we need to study the whole topic at a high level. We will start with retrieval and then iterate between encoding and retrieval. Starting with retrieval before encoding is called a pretest. In computer science, this could be a big task, like attempting to begin a project. However, we'll keep it basic, give ChatGPT our syllabus, and prompt it for 20 questions about the material. Even though we don't yet know the material, we should try our best. Trying and failing sets up good learning. Next, we encode some information by performing inquiry and constructing a mental model. We use the high-level keywords from our syllabus and ChatGPT to perform inquiry-based learning. We ask ChatGPT questions and then try to draw out our mental model as a diagram or concept map. We'll do this iteratively as we learn more, asking questions and updating our mental model on the canvas. After the first encoding, we should have a high-level understanding of the topic. It won't necessarily be detailed and correct, but we can work with it. In fact, we should try to use our understanding immediately in the next retrieval phase. 
we try to teach the topic from memory, speaking aloud and drawing on the canvas. At this high level, we focus on teaching imaginary students how things fit together and why these topics are important to learn. Inevitably, we run into problems teaching because we don't yet know very much. Using a red pen, we circle the things we're unsure about and write down questions that come up. Hopefully, we ran into things that were hard to teach due to our limited knowledge. We can take advantage of that and do one more encoding phase to answer those questions and improve our mental model. We've now taken a first pass at the whole topic at a high level. Let's zoom out, back up, and think about where we are. We need to self-regulate. We have two main tools for self-regulation. The first is our learning template from earlier, where we wrote down our goals and approach. The other is a goal cycle. Let's create one goal cycle encompassing our goal for the course, Learn Deep Learning. We add an entry, title it Finished First Pre-Study, and use a research-backed template called the ERA cycle. Details are for another video, but the idea is to reflect on what we've done so far and think about what we need to do next. Do we need to change our approach or watch out for anything? Here we note that there are more homeworks and projects than expected, so we should adapt our plan to use those as part of our retrieval. We should then do that and check it off, but let's move on. Assuming we fully covered the topic at a high level, we move on to Module 1. Again, we start with retrieval and do a pretest. Then we encode the material at a high level. Before encoding, we can start a focus session in Omni, where we write down our goal, begin a timer, and go through a focus checklist. During the session, we create a mental model using a concept map. After encoding, we do a quick retrieval session, try to draw the same concept map from memory, and then check retention. More encoding sessions follow, where we build out our concept map and mental models further. Additionally, we start creating spaced repetition flashcards for facts and vocabulary we want to remember. The following retrieval sessions will include doing those flashcards, teaching the material, and working on homework and projects. If we find something confusing or difficult to use, we can call it out in a goal cycle and focus on it in the next encoding session. At this point, we need to think about long-term retention. Maybe we need to remember all of this for a final or even a big professional exam in a few years. For that, we can use the scheduling board and continue to perform retrieval and a little re-encoding for topics we've already covered. We can move cards from one column to the next, record the date we reviewed, and color code retention quality. By now, we're doing pretty well. We're finding information using inquiry-based learning and constructing a mental model on our infinite canvas. We're encoding new information into our brain and then retrieving and using that information to check our learning, reorganize neural connections, and create curiosity. Throughout our learning, we're self-regulating by looking at the big picture and adapting our approach to new challenges. Finally, like a distinguished engineer, we're following a rigorous, iterative process that can be repeatedly adapted for any learning goal. If you want to support the channel, check out Omni on the iPad App Store and maybe leave a review. It really helps.